This is Bilal Randri and I'm with Mark Levine at the 6th Al Jazeera Forum. Hi, can you just give us a brief introduction of yourself and why you're here? Yes, uh, my name is Mark Levine. I'm a columnist at the English website for Al Jazeera and a professor of Middle Eastern history at UC Irvine and at the Center for Middle Eastern Studies in Lund University in Sweden. Cool. The uh, revolutions in the region so far, um, you've obviously been following them very, very closely. Where do you see things going in the next few months, years? Well, I still think, in fact, it's kind of early to talk about revolutions. I mean, in a place like Egypt and Tunis, where you've had the most far-reaching changes, it still only changes at the top. The systems are still in place, really more or less intact. So I think what's going to happen now, and we've seen this in the last few days in Egypt, we're going to see the, the elements that want to preserve the status quo in some form are going to start trying more and more ways from millions of different angles to upset the balance of the forces that want to change in order to preserve the status quo. And so I think what's really going to happen in the next couple of months is we're going to see whether all these forces that have come together throughout society in a place like Egypt or Tunis can figure out how to keep the level of solidarity they need together to push through the changes that they actually fought for. Uh, with Egypt specifically, do you think uh, at least a perceived lack of leadership is, is part of, of, of the problem there that needs to be solved pretty soon? or? Well, you know, I think at some moments a lack of leadership is really good and useful, and then at other moments it can become a problem. You, you see this, of course, in Libya right now, where there's no really unified opposition that, that people can recognize at the international level. I, I think, you know, I mean, I was there during the revolution. I sat in on some of the meetings of some of the young organizers, and they're much more united than we think. The problem is, is that you know the army is so entrenched and is so powerful, and now with so many conflicts going on in so many places, you know, the world's attention has kind of shifted, and that's given them more space to try to crack down a bit, to try to you know pry the mass of Egyptians who maybe were sort of happy that Mubarak left, but also are very apprehensive about change. And, and the goal clearly of the army is try to separate the mass of Egyptians by, by saying, you know, we've done changes, we're moving from the activists who know really how far the change has to go in order to be real. And, uh, you know, we'll find out who's going to win this struggle, but it's a struggle that's going to go on for months and months and months. And the key issue is really elections. And strangely enough, you know, everyone wants elections because that means democracy. But if you have direct, if you have elections really fast, and people haven't had time to develop parties, to really put out platforms, to really vet who is where, you're going to wind up seeing a lot of people, for example, from the NDP, running as independents, getting re-elected, and re-entrenching themselves, quote-unquote, democratically. So we're in a situation where the activists who really want true democracy can very easily be made to look like strange or like, I thought you wanted democracy, now you're saying we shouldn't have elections really soon. What is it you really want? And that's going to be the task for them to develop a coherent, positive narrative of change that can withstand attacks from so many sides from people who want to make sure that the change really doesn't happen below the surface. Cool, thanks so much. We will continue to follow your analysis on our website. That's yeah. english.aljazeera.net. Yeah. Well, thanks great so to be here in Doha.